People look forward to tearing people down. First thing I thought of when you said that, people look forward to, I feel like they're just unhappy in their own lives. Projecting. And they're looking to channel that on somebody. Projecting. Yeah. It's easier for me to deal with your shit than it is for me to deal with mine. Welcome to a very special episode. Connection is magic. Chase Anthony in the building. Thank you so much for blessing us. Thank you for having with me. your presence, bro. Thank you for Absolutely, me. man. So let's dive into real quick, like where you grew up, because I think that kind of shapes a person. I remember you sharing in an interview. I listened to you, uh, Minnesota, mm -hmm. correct? Well, I'm from Atlanta, but moved to Minnesota. So it was okay. The, the culture shock at a young age. That's wild. How old were you when you left Atlanta? Um, fourteen. Or 13, I turned 14 that summer. Okay, so it was so like, just like, you thought that you were like, no, nah, I'm, you know, I, I should be making my own decisions kind of yeah. thing. And you get up there and you're like. How's Atlanta changed, man? Like uh, Atlanta's an interesting place to me, so let's just spend a minute there. Oh, yeah. a a Atlanta's <laughs> interesting growing up because of, it it's not as diverse. Mm -hmm. Like that's just not the setup, especially when I was growing up. Now it definitely, you know, I'm, I'm a lot more aware culturally. So yeah. now it, it isn't just black and white. Now you're like, oh, okay, I didn't. I didn't know they had a Latin community down here. They're like, no, they have a big I Latin community. Latin community <laughs> there, yeah, right, yeah. and I didn't, I didn't know that either. And so when I went back to film, um, I, I saw that. But uh, it, it was, it was different because it was also too like the era of bass in some senses. So what bass brings was the dancing. So you got Freaknik, you got parties, you got mm -hmm. different events going on where you're just like, oh my God, I don't know if this is for my young eyes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it matures you in, in, in certain ways, but and definitely, you know, uh, traumatic in others, I guess, in, yeah. in some senses. And then you go to Minnesota and it's the complete opposite. It is the complete opposite. It is white. Yes. I think of like strip malls for some reason. No, no, shade on minnesota but like are there a lot of strip malls like the target center the target, target right? center yeah, but yeah, yeah. they have the mall of america so they have the biggest mall oh my god yo i just like psychically picked that up yeah <laughs> and i didn't know that was there right yes okay okay so so that's a major culture shock so you as a creative right mm -hmm. did your soul feel more fed in atlanta versus minnesota between the two of them i would definitely say atlanta mm -hmm. but i think that L.A. is what sparked it because you get out here. L.A., New York, for me, is really a melting pot. Yeah. So it's it, a big soup bowl of creativity, bro. Man, That's what I love being out man. here. Man. Yeah. And everybody's motivated. Everybody's come from different places. Mm -hmm. Everybody's educated in different ways. So like you said, we're always learning something if you yeah. want to learn. Yeah. And so I think that those, it kind of diminished, I say, the the idea of what culture was in Atlanta and Minnesota, but it also made me more aware of Minnesota because Minnesota, what I didn't know was there's a Hmong community, there's mm. a African community. So you got Somalians, you got Ethiopians, you got Eritreans, like Damn. you have uh, a melting pot, but you're just not necessarily navigating that way. So I stayed in a very black neighborhood and I went to school in a very middle-class white neighborhood. So mm. it wasn't the upper echelons of like, hey, we're, you know, we've been rich for a while, but they, everybody was doing good. Yeah. So everybody was happy. So you're like, oh, okay, cool. Like, you're not necessarily feeling, you're feeling that you're probably one of the only black people here, but you're not necessarily feeling it from a, a place of the financial burdens or where everybody's like, oh, well, yeah, I'm driving my Ferrari to school. Or I mean, like I'm, you can in LA, right? That's the, yeah. So I didn't necessarily pick up some of those materialistic ideologies i guess when i was a younger age it's just mm -hmm. you, you seem really ground i mean I, we're just knowing each other now here but you seem pretty grounded to me and I'm i have like, I, I have think, my moments yeah I, I have my moments where i'm like i'm grounded but i love my cleaning lady you know what i'm saying it's <laughs> like <laughs> it's like you know it's it's like all right cool I, I still now you know we've we've grown a little bit so we figure out things that are probably more aligned with our yeah. day to day but yes i kind of enjoy it like Enjoy not buying into the facade of things because that's what LA will. Like, that, that's should... the that's the dark side of LA, right? It's funny, man. Like, I just had this is happening the other day. I just went to like a little get together the other day, and it was like you know La Brea area, and it's a different vibe by the beach with like La Brea area. And I'm like, you know, bro, I feel shit. I'm like, I meditate like daily, mm. so I'm really in tune. And like when I go east, bro, I, I just feel a different energy over there, bro. Totally. I, oh, yeah. I, so I, states. I lived in Santa Monica yeah. right before I moved to downtown. Yeah. And when you say that you feel it, oh, my God. Oh, man. <laughs> like yeah. it's every day. And, yeah. and that's why in a lot of ways I wish I was still in my Santa Monica place during the pandemic. Mm. Right. 
I think that my Santa Monica is a studio, mm -hmm. but downtown is a loft. Mm -hmm. And so it has more space. And so the first part of it, you definitely start to feel bad because you know what people are going through. And you're like, man, I could just move more people in here. And you're like, yeah, no, that's not a good idea. And then you'll go downstairs and you see people laying on the ground. You see people getting walked past yeah. while they're laying on the ground. So you can see the disconnect. In Santa Monica, it was different because they definitely, the homeless population has definitely grown. Yeah. But you could tell that people are still aware that there's that's a person. Mm. Downtown, they just become a too custom to it. So now they're just going by. And so that energy, everybody's just moving faster. You know, you go by the beach, people a little chiller. You know, hey, we're going to get there when we get there. Yeah, like, yeah li like literally slower pace, you could see more. Faster pace, you see less. Man. Straight up. So it, it it was it was different for me sitting in that because, again, like I am grounded. Like I, I enjoy being a real person, talking mm -hmm. to real people, having a real human experience. And you, once you start seeing that exchange, you can either buy into it yeah. or it's going to put you the other way. So I was in my house feeling guilty at points where I'm like, man, like. You, know, you sound like Louis C.K., you're a comedian. So like Louis C.K. had a bit about, he's like, if you drive a Lexus, you're an asshole because there's like 10 starving children just died because you had to have a Lexus. Well, and and you, know? you can get caught up in the whole exchange. And I think we see it with diamonds. We see it with all kinds of yeah. different things that we, you know, we find. As I grow older, I'm trying to be more like less black and white, more in the grays. So like, why can't you have a, a nice car and like go do charity work? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and that's where I sit. That's where I sit. Because it's like, all right, cool. I'm not disconnected. If I'm doing my part as far as whether it's food, whether yeah. it's clothes, whether it, it's a, a couple of dollars, I feel like I've done my part in mm. some senses. But also, too, you know, now I know that it comes down to voting and stuff like that as well. Of Like, yeah. all right, cool. Well, these people are out here for a reason. We're not paying attention to it because it doesn't affect us until it does. I think just do what you can do at the current level and, uh, you know, space you have to do it with right so like that's the thing is like people like when i get more money i'll do this well what are you doing now with the resources that you have you see what i'm saying mm -hmm. like i donate to like four charities at crazy amounts amounts i can afford right now but guess what happens when i get the bag then i, I, can... I just you know what i'm saying i just expand that's it and now i got yeah. my own charity because now i have the resources that's it. but i think a lot of people don't necessarily see that part of the journey right mm -hmm. and i think that that is is LA and it is totality. At the end yeah. of the day, everybody's waiting to get to this moment and they think that that's magic, bro, that's we happiness, gotta talk, that's we gotta talk all about this. that. Like, bro, we gotta talk about that because people's mental health is taking a beating because they're waiting to live life. And Am I've I been right? that person. I know. I've been that person. Hey, man, I've been that person. We've all been that person, I feel like. If we're being honest, would you agree that everybody, everybody, in everybody the entertainment has, space oh my has God. been that person? I, I'll say majority because because now, now, the one thing that I, I've been able to see is certain people have been wired or programmed or picked up information to where they can't pivot from it, right? So some of us have grown up with parents that have been okay nurturing whatever fantasies, you know, we got fixated on, whatever dreams. Crazy supportive. yeah, Right. And yeah. then some of us have been like, no, there's this formula. So you're going to go to school. Mm -hmm. You're going to find a wife or a husband at school and you're going to be happy for the rest of your life. I'm not happy, but that's what I heard. It works. And it's like, well, no, that actually doesn't work. Yeah. And I, yeah. I followed that whole regime. I had a career. I did all that. And then finding out that finance wasn't my end You were an game. accountant for people mm -hmm. listening, yeah. Yeah, so I was, I was a production accountant. So I, yeah. uh, I've worked on shows like Flavor of Love, For the Love of Ray J, Real and Chance, uh, Megan Wants a Millionaire, <laughs> Rock of Love. Yeah, you know, the bullshit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the stuff that you probably sh oh, sh shouldn't be watching. So, bro, I just saw this video, uh, Andrew Schultz. Mm-hmm. There's a clip of him talking about TikTok is a Chinese company. Man, I watched uh, that same thing. Did you thing. see that clip? I just watched it. Boom. Right? Like, okay, so let's tell the people that are listening, right? So, like, Andrew Schultz was talking about if if you're a Chinese company and you're a competing, you know, superpower mm -hmm. country-wise, what are you going to make pop in the algorithm the most? The dumbed-down, stupid-ass shit pops the most. And in China, it's like... Uh, lessons on being an engineer, Man. things like that, right? Structure. It's popping over there in their algorithm. 
bro, this shit is chess, not checkers, bro. <laughs> like, I'm telling you, this and, is crazy. And to be honest, because, yeah. you know, because I've traveled. So when I went to Japan, it blew my mind. Mm, tell me. Right? Yeah. Um, one, because I'm black man in Tokyo. Did they so, look did they look at you differently as a black well, guy? Like ooh. they they do yeah. and then they don't, right? So uh -huh. they give a fuck and then they quickly don't, right? Because <laughs> because we're American, so we'll yeah. do some American shit. Like yeah. we'll be on our phone in this tight spot because we think that this phone call is that important and everybody looking at you like, "No, nah, we don't do that." Yeah. We don't talk on the phones here." And you're Damn. like, I like that. Are I'm, they just more present, you're saying? Or, they're, or they're more yeah. present and isolated. So at the end of the day, all the extras, like, that's American. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's very American. This is the time where we're shuttling back and forth. So if one of us is loud, then that, you know, that might be impeding on somebody else's For sure. yeah. travel experience or they might be reading. So you'll see a lot I get more. I like they're more respectful is kind of what it comes down to. That's what it comes that, That's yeah. pretty much what it comes down to. And they don't, I think they don't buy into it. They dress mm -hmm. fly as hell, though. Mm -hmm. I will say that. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> but the thing that I noticed was, we sat down to eat, and there was this kid sitting at the table, maybe two, maybe three. You know, I don't have kids, so that age range thing I kind of get thrown off with. But he had the phone. Then he picked up the iPad. And the way that he was typing in stuff on the iPad and then the stuff that he was looking at on the iPad, it wasn't cartoons, What usually is the stuff that... Here. Mm -hmm. Exactly, where it's mm -hmm. like, hey, let's distract this kid. Hey, they're crying. Hey, we're going to yep. give him something. and yep. Pacify him, man. Yeah. He, he was watching real life stuff. And then when he wasn't entertained by that, and the whole time we're sitting there looking like, where are his parents? Hmm. Right. And they had a kind of a, a buffet style at the hotel that we were staying at. Hmm. So they were, they were eating, but you just saw this kid sitting there probably about 10, 15 minutes. Cause you know, it started to bother us. Mm -hmm. Americans like, you can't leave your kid just like that. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. Er so, totally different. so we started to time it and it started to make us uncomfortable. His parents came there, and you could see just the interaction was different. And that was where I really started to notice the difference as far as when you start breaking down all these norms that we had. But once you start programming a child like that, and they were talking to him like a person. They weren't talking to him like, hey, goo goo ga ga, and you just so. It was like, hey, so what do you want to eat? He answered. He answered. What do you want this? Answered. And again, they're not speaking English. It wasn't like a messy answer. It was just like a pinpoint answer, bro. Really? It was a pinpoint answer and went back to what he was doing. And then when the, when, when the parents came back with what he wanted, they got what they wanted. Then they came back with what he wanted. He put it down. They sat there. They ate. He sounds like 30, not three. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. He's better than most That's of my crazy. friends. <laughs> Like how do how are your table manners just and, and and the point at large here is just the conditioning from an early age is what you're saying yeah and we mm -hmm. are I think we've experienced too much diversity for sometimes for us to to muddle the noise in mm -hmm. some senses right yeah. so because it's so black and white in America yeah you don't really get down to what works for us as a society no oh, it's fucked up man. I just, as you said that, so black and white in America, I thought about CNN, Fox. Like, where the fuck, where's the shit in the middle? You know what I'm trying to, like. If this is news. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If this is news. Yeah. If y'all reporting the same thing, but y'all have drastically different yeah. perspectives it, on it. Like, yeah. it's like, how are y'all watching this? And then two, I think because we've dumbed down so many things yeah. that yeah. we can't wonder why some of the people move the way that they do. Mm. And then they get preyed on the way that they do. Because again, this is a democracy. So we 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 need somebody at the top. We need somebody at the bottom. Absolutely. Yeah, so how do you keep that threshold? And that was one of the epiphanies that I got to see, I guess, firsthand was seeing that rich people look at poor people the same. Rich white people look at poor white people the same. They look mm -hmm. how they look at poor people. Because at the end of the day, they if, don't care black white. You're saying they see poor well, people as poor people. That, you know poor people is poor people to right, rich people. Right, right. And and in order to keep our society going, and in order to keep the norms, in order to keep the rich richer mm -hmm. and the poor poor. That's why again the middle class keeps just diminishing. It's like all right, cool, you're about nah, to get the on one side. Is very rigged, bro. But this is all you know. This is starting to really be a known thing, bro. If you have if you have a credit card uh, where you owe like three thousand dollars on it, and you just make the minimums, it'll take you like. 30 years to pay off that 3k or something am i right so, yeah. some, i mean you're it's, accountant it's, so you know yeah, yeah. And, and it's and, crazy but that's the it's, trick bag the that we get system. into yes yeah, 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 that's the yeah. that's the, the trick bag but again it goes back to the voting we yeah. don't know why we're voting for what we're voting and then we don't have enough trust in the voting system so mm. then now you start to really dismantle why we're doing what we're doing and yeah, as we, long as we, we're good yeah 
then we're, we're it doesn't matter. To but us. there's a lot of asleep people, right, that allow this shit to carry on like this, and, and a lot of distractions. Like if you're distracted, you're not gonna focus on the shit that matters, right? And you're gonna <laughs> like, keep swiping and watching the dances <laughs> and the I'm stupid saying. stuff on online. And, that's and, what I'm saying, bro. And we are Real very shit. distracted society. We are. we are. Yeah, the attention span now is crazy. But I want to go back for a second because I just saw something else that was that was crazy. See, I use Instagram and this shit to like educate and like because that's an option too. Right. Most people probably aren't taking that route. It's probably the other route that we're talking about, right? They, but they don't. They don't. But peep this. There's this guy that did a little meme skit on TikTok that one guy he pretended to be himself and then he played the other character pretending to be the bank. And he's like, <laughs> he gave the bank a thousand dollars and he's like, here, hold on my money. And then a year later, that you know, the interest on a thousand dollars is like what, like, you know, fifty cents? If that maybe if that. if that. And then he flipped it and he's like the bank giving him a thousand dollars. And after a year, he's like, that'll be like, you know, three hundred dollars or something of interest going the other way. Mm-hmm. That shit was fire to me. Yeah. If but, you look at this shit. But we don't yeah. slow down enough to think about it. As well yeah. as we we now, um, I'm not sure how old you are, but we've watched everything evolve from where we got the torch to a very microwave society. Like just millennial to Gen Z even you're talking? Yeah, what? yeah and, yeah, and yeah. we were bridged in between how you got information, where you got information from. Now, you're overloaded with information. Overloaded, yeah. So instead of dealing with the stuff that's real, mm-hmm. I'd rather distract myself. Because it's too much? Yeah, because at the end of the day, like, if you already are in a society that thinks for you hmm. and you think that it's, it's thinking the best things for you, mm. you'll kick back a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. And That's if you're true. caught up in your stuff, and again, like the That's biggest true. epiphany that I had lately was the idea of work, right? So we're all caught up in work. But what our norms are, are that there's 24 hours in a day, mm-hmm. right? And no matter how fa- rich you are or poor you are, there's 24 hours in a day. Yeah, right, but which is still a false concept. Mm. Explain. Right? There's 12 hours in a day. There's 12 hours in a night. Right, you're sleeping for like what eight of them, most people. So right, so. And what they broke down was yeah. I couldn't convince you to work eight hours, nine hours, if you knew that there was only twelve hours in this day. Whoa. That's so I convinced you that there's twenty four. Yeah. Damn. So I convinced you that there's twenty four. So now you're spending eight hours at work, whatever your commute is, your break for lunch, and then that little pocket before you go to sleep and wake up and recycle it. But. How aware of a society would we be if we really only worked 12 hours? Uh, if 12 hours was our day and we only worked for six of it? Because also, too, our brains our brains are overloaded at a certain point, too. Yeah, of course. To where now, you, you yeah, we can master the mundane, but yeah. y- you're really not. It's called, like, diminished returns, basically. You heard that. Pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. But I'd rather get that, mm-hmm. especially because I'm not even paying you your worth. That's just wild. Actually, so you're saying that, like, most people just aren't living because there's not enough hours to live. And that goes That's into our that. our other point where, that you brought up earlier. People are waiting to get to a point yep. where they feel like financially they can live. Listen, bro, this is a perfect segue into something I want to talk about deeper with you mm-hmm. earlier, which is this idea of people waiting. The entertainment industry, and we touched on it, and then we kind of went past it. Let's go deeper into that. You know, somebody coming out here. I mean, you were that guy coming out here, right? And I assume you didn't know a ton of people when you were first coming out here. Or did you already know some I, I knew a fair amount of people coming from Minnesota. Like in the entertainment space, so I'm saying. Did you know? Actually, people? I, I, I you did. did. Know okay, so I, knew, not- I, I knew a few people, but the entertainment industry to me when I first got out here was a turnoff. So I wanted nothing to do with. Anything. That's important, right, right. Because okay. I, I got to see the falseness before, right? And a lot of people are waiting to be the man, mm-hmm. right? They're like, oh, once I'm this and then this, right? <laughs> yeah. But when you play sports in some senses, you've kind of already walked that walk. If you've gotten any praise or you've gotten any accolades as you an athlete. You play football. Yeah, and I ran track. So and you ran track. So, yeah, let's take that. Let's distill that and, and how that relates. Go for So yeah. I've been AAU, so that's... You're ranked in the nation at that point. I've been all state, all conference, all those things. So you you kind of gotten those accolades and mm. you've gotten that praise. And then mm. at certain points you've been in shape. So you've gotten that praise. At one point I also You was, worked really hard at something and excelled basically at it, right? Yeah. And, and, and now it's just the same idea in entertainment, basically. Just right. stamina, somebody told me. But you know? again, people buy into once I get to this place, this is how people will see me. Mm. They're like holding their breath for that praise almost, right? Yeah, yeah. In athletics, it's not the same. 
same? You're saying there's a difference there? Or no, you saying I'm the saying that the the correlation of if you've already gotten that praise, yeah. and especially whether it's on the field or off the field, right? I'm with so you. I'm with you. If people have been like, oh man, so that he he the fast one. Mm-hmm. Oh, that he's he played for this team. Or oh, he do this. You've already kind of got that praise, and especially if you're seeking the attention from women, if you're seeking it from your peers, yeah. if you're seeking the financial parts. Mm-hmm. Once you start bringing those things in at a younger age, now once you get out here, it's not necessarily like, oh, well, once I get here, I'm going to be the man. It's like, no, nah, I've already been the that's man. That's beautifully and, said, man. And so for me, that's I think that's what kind of had me take a back seat yeah. to it because I could see the falseness. I'm There's like, this like yearning for it that you didn't come out here with because you had already satisfied that, if you will, right? And I needed a fresh new start. So yeah. I was fucking up in Minnesota. I was playing sports. Can we talk about that? Yeah. yeah. How did that, because like we, we talk a lot on the Connections Magic about life's chapters. I think it's so wild to me. Like this life chapter could be your end all be all. And then that goes away. And now you're on this new journey. Right. And for you, how did that sports chapter come to an end? And was it painful first and foremost? It fucked me up for a little bit. Right. Because okay. that was one of my identifiers. Yup. So exactly. once I lost that. And I lost it because of my own actions. Who am I now? So for me, I've been on my own since I was 15, Mm -hmm. right? So when I got to college, you still see what other people have that you don't. Mm -hmm. And so on your journey to try to fit in, you try to create your own revenue stream. So for me, I was hustling. Everybody buying weed, I'm going to sell it. Cool. What that did, I didn't know, was it propelled a terrible mindset. Right? How so? Because you still want to be accepted. So it's not going to be a secret. So when you're taking your your teammates out to dinner, or well now you went from this car to this car, now it's exposed, right? Mm. Now you're not just this regular college kid. It's, it's a little amplified, and you play sports. Yeah. So now it's a little known. So me and my coach got into it because I had to go to summer school. He found out. So he, he his, found out about the dealing, basically, yeah. right? Okay. And then okay, yeah. because we were at a private school, he was like, hey, for you to be eligible, we just found out that you got to take this summer school class. It's a private school. Mm-hmm. So the class was like five to seven grand. Wow. And I'm like, well, wow. do I have any scholarship money? Do I have any? What's the name? He was like, nah, they don't have this. So Did they do to, that to like set you up to get you out of there or something, do you think? Or no, that just, okay. I, to be honest, I, I don't know. Okay. I know I transferred, so some of my stuff didn't necessarily transfer, but mm. I, I had great grades. I had been here for a year already ineligible because I transferred. And so you were like, killing it in sports for that school. Yeah, assume, so I'm right? so I'm like, so, all right, cool. So now we're going in. So it's the summer. Yeah. And we're going into the fall. So we're going back into football season. Mm-hmm. So they're like, all right, cool. Who's not eligible? Who's eligible? What I'm do we you. have to do to get them eligible? I needed this class. It was that much. And his advice kind of just set me off. Cause now I'm I'm in a position where I'm like, oh okay, cool. You got this grown man telling kids how to become men. Yeah. Once you start telling them something that is counterproductive, I, I had a, a huge problem with that. Cause he was like, I was like, well, I don't have any more scholarship money. I don't have any of this. Well, why don't you just not afford the seven grand at the time, right? Okay. In, in okay. theory. Yeah. Right? Yeah. In theory. But cause he knows in his head, he's like, well, why don't you do something positive with the money that you're getting? Because it's kind of apparent that you're getting it. Me, that set me off because it's still like, well, why don't you tell me not to do it at all? And mm-hmm. we find another alternative. But the fact that this is your suggestion and this is the first time you're confronting me with it, I have a problem with it. Because now you're telling this young man to do something that could damage his life forever. He was encouraging you to sell drugs to get this money? I just want to be clear. (laughs) He's encouraging you to use the money for good. If you're going to do it, you're going to do it. He's not your parent. And he's not supposed to know. Got it. If but if you if you're gonna do something, if you're gonna do wrong, making it at least do right with it. Right, and 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 as an adult, right, a, a part of me can see where he was coming from. But as a man, now in hindsight, a, does that seem like fucked up advice? It, to you? it was fucked right, up right, advice right, then. Right, right. So I it I clicked and I tried to fight him. So my position coach was sitting here, God rest his soul, and you kind of black out. And next thing I know, I'm trying to fight my coach. So now I'm no longer playing football. Wild. Wild. That was the ending to that it, was, huh? That was the ending. But then I left from that meeting. So I had just got fired from a job, too, because of the hustling, right? So I had came from getting fired because we did this you charity did like event. like a day job you had, right? Yeah. Okay. Because, you again, you for me, I started to, wow, you know, you're starting to educate yourself. Yeah. So you're like, all right, cool. Well, I can't just deposit cash. Right, 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 right. So it's going to weird, right? <laughs> so yeah. now I had to I had to get yeah, a job. Yeah, yeah. So I got a job at, <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying all this, um, at a uh, lawn care service. Okay. Right? So Easy to hide money. <laughs> and travel with grass. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so 
So, it, you know, I, my mindset was like, yo, yeah. bro, like, you're probably before your time. But, yeah. like, it, this. So you were dealing in grass on both sides. Bro. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I was fucking off my real job because yeah. I was mismanaging my time. So, yeah. but because I'm such a, a honest person, like, I don't want to not do my job. So I was keeping the paperwork because my intention was to go back and do it. So they found the paperwork because we had a football charity event. Hmm. So they found all the paperwork. So I had that meeting. I went wow. from getting fired to now this coach's meeting to now leaving from now there. Now you fight your coach, you said. And then I leave straight from there to go to the house. We would stay in the football house, and the landlord had everybody on the line like, hey, y'all got to get out because of these, 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 these. Them not knowing what's going on. I was like, was this well, all in what, three three days, two days? This was all in one day. In one day, bro? That's and, a lot in man, one day, Chase. <laughs> man, what are you, a as a 20 year old, like wow. I wasn't even 21. Like I, I was sitting there, I was like, what the hell? And, and then I took the hit. So all this came crashing down like that, right? Now, what are you thinking after you're just sitting with like, all this rubble around you? I broke down. So yeah. the girl that I was dating, she witnessed it because. It, it was the day from hell, but I didn't realize what it was pushing me towards, right? It was breaking me all the way down yeah. to be built back up with a totally different mindset. I was driving, so when I said that I had moved up, I went from a Toyota Corolla FX to a Monte Carlo with T-tops to a Lexus LS400, right? There's a Lexus. <laughs> exactly. In a short, uh, a short span of time. Mm -hmm. And I'm driving down the freeway because she's like, hey, let's just go out. Let's go meet your friends. We're going to go just have some drinks and, like... Let's kind of unwind from all this together, right? Yeah. I'm driving down the freeway. Mm -hmm. A rock comes off one of those construction trucks, hits the windshield. Shadow. It starts to spire. And I'm sitting there, and she said that she saw me just put my head on the steering wheel while I'm driving down the freeway. Bro, wow. And again, you're, you're talking about this. I feel like God was trying to get your attention, bro. Man. Real talk. And, and, I, and, and how much do you, you know. fight this? Yeah, wow. And so that was kind of that real turning point, it kind of pivoted because now you've lost your identifiers. Mm -hmm. And now you know why you lost your identifiers. So it was like, hey, you thought this little bit of money was going to help this, this, and this, and it kind of destroyed this, this, and this. Mm. So now you haven't even picked up on, you don't even want to do this no more because you're realizing how much it's taken from you. Yeah. So now it, it was starting to spiral. And then that's when my aunt who lived out here. So when you said, do you know, did you have anybody in the entertainment industry? I, my aunt was like, well, hey, you know, we kind of know what's going on. We know that you ain't up there snowboarding, building snowmen. <laughs> like, why the fuck are you still in Minnesota? Mm -hmm. Where you go from here is, is going to dictate a lot. For sure. And so she was like, well, why don't you come out here? And I was like, well, nah, I'm good. And, she, and then because I was still trying to manage things, the person who I was getting stuff from got locked up so wow. i called her back the literally plug got locked up okay. and, and that took care so of now itself. we now <laughs> now we're now we're talking okay. and talking about, so the plug got got yeah. fucked up right yeah so then in the midst of this i had this conversation with my aunt earlier in the day mm -hmm. the plug got fucked up there because they're three hours behind i'm calling thinking i'm gonna leave my aunt a message mm. but she's up yeah. And she was like, oh, okay, cool. I'll get you a ticket for this weekend. At the time, I'm like, I got two cars. I can't. And your girl, too, right? Are you still with that girl? No. Nah. Uh, okay. So How did that end? Was that? It, it wasn't. Did it end where she was like, you're too fucked up. I got to go? Like, because that's. It did kind we're, of in like that? we're in college. So now she's yeah. like, hey, this is kind of going on. Mm -hmm. But I got to go back to school. And she okay. went to school in Alabama. Got you, got you. Okay. So when she left, it was just like, all right, well, cool. So then you start vibing with whoever, mm -hmm. you know, they enticed by certain things because you do got a little bit more flexibility. Yep. And so in those moments, I didn't, I really didn't have anything that was keeping me there. And that was what my aunt made me realize was like, so why are you there? Because whatever you're going to try to change, that fresh new start and all this, you kind of already got all these labels. You got all this stuff already surrounding you. And I'll be honest, I wasn't a good drug dealer. <laughs> I'm not like because I'm too nice of a person. You know what I'm saying? Like at the grand scheme of things, like this is the shit that I need to talk about on stage too. Like I was just that was just too nice of a drug dealer. That's what it was. That's why I didn't really last the way that it needed to, probably. Bro, I was I so was good. good. <laughs> I was good because I'm punctual, <laughs> I'm educated, but like, you know, what's I'm not... the downside look like of being too nice of a drug dealer? Is it like, oh, you need this for 30? Okay, don't worry about it. I got you. You're, what, what, you're, you're too understanding. You're like yeah. that that gym that never is gonna make money because like everybody comes in with their sob story of like you this and you're like yeah, well just you. just take it now and we're good it's like this they already got it the fuck so for me it, it really kind of was that pivotal point because when i got out here 
it was that Aladdin, a whole new world. Yeah. Because I had been coached, I was coachable. So breaking me down and mm. building me back up is kind of the formula. That's what For football sure. is. It's like, oh, okay, cool. You can't do this. We're going to get you here. Yeah. And so she came out here. I got a job with her and she worked for a, a management company and a, a festival. So when you say like my management and stuff like this, oh, I worked point, for- bro. I shout worked, out to Shout out to Chase's management real quick. <laughs> funny thing about got, that, yeah, go ahead. when I first got out here, that's who I worked for. Get out of here. I worked for my management company. Damn. Because again- Not I, doing really anything in nothing, front of the camera, or nothing. Nothing. Okay, then, crazy. And because of the other clients, when we would go out and kick it, that was what exposed me to like, oh, I don't want nothing to do with this. Let me just mm. get me a job, find my lane. I'm good. So mm. I took classes at UCLA, all that, and that's how I got into the accounting. Okay. okay. And then it was that epiphany once you start really making money, this ain't what I'm supposed to be doing. This doesn't make me happy. And that's when you really start understanding depression in a, in a, in a different way. Did you get really low? I did. Mm. And... I couldn't identify. Like, as a young black man, you thought that money was going to be that, that that's, step. That's the messaging, right? That's the messaging. As far as, like, oh, okay, cool. Now now I'm here. I can be looked at this way. I, you know, it kind of negates all the negative stuff that yeah. I might have done to get to this point. But now this validates this journey. Now this validates me. I heard Andrew Schultz make a point about this. I just want to mention. Mm -hmm. I don't know why we're talking about Andrew Schultz so much. But, but I, I mean, he's smart. Listen, so, yeah. yeah. So he was like, a lot of people that he said are, are trying to make it and are suffering from depression, them are the people that take themselves out because when they get successful and it doesn't do it, they're like, I got no other option. And that's why I said that a lot of people are waiting to be the man. Mm -hmm. And yep. for me, yep. it also was, it kind of conflicted with it, with yourself because sometimes too, you're associating to the financial burdens that you might be experiencing. Mm -hmm. So when I got fired, cause I went in to go quit as an accountant, got fired, I, I had a whole speech. The dude fired me before I got the speech out. You were right there on the doorstep of quitting? Mm hmm So, <laughs> bro, we got it. All right, so break this down quickly. So how did you get fired from this job? So the first label that I got, I didn't like because it was like I'm the hip-hop accountant, mm. right? Because I'm intelligent and I'm articulate and yeah. all this. I don't want that label. But because I won't conform to the way that you think that an accountant should dress, we're in production. So right. why the fuck am I dressing up? For sure. There's no need for that. But <laughs> the controller that we had, he was the one who was pushing the agenda. He came from oil. So he was like, hey, look, this is how we dress. I need you to come in earlier. So now you can't defeat me because, again, if it coming in earlier, I've, I've had to run. I've had to come in and train. I've, I, when I moved in positions, they make you sit and do a training meal so you got to eat in front of your coaches. So those things won't break me. But once you start labeling me this and I catch wind of it, mm -hmm. then now I'm— you're I'm, not. You're, yeah, you're not trying to perpetuate that type of shit. Basically, right. So yeah. then I start dressing. So I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, cool. So this is this. And then it just started to so defeat wait, me more. Like, what did you do? Wear a jersey and protest? Like, <laughs> let me get the. Right. I was just like, let what me, the let fuck? Me get the, let me get like my finest LeBron James jersey and really push this thing to the Man, no, no, let me so come in here in some basketball <laughs> shorts looking like I'm about to go yeah. hoop right after. You know what I mean? It's like, so, no, is this going to make me smarter or is this is this affecting my work? That's what really matters, of course, I think. Right. And so, so that sort it's almost like that. Go back to the windshield analogy. The crack was in the windshield basically and just kind of spidered out and you don't you think fired. about and, and I, I think a lot of us don't go back and look at these things and how they affect us for better the most fucked up times in our lives bro when we get shattered we could grow into works of art bro because you got to get put back together you, 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 yeah you got to get put back together and you gotta that's why i have this podcast is like because if, if you can keep the right frame of mind through that process there is gold waiting for you i'm, I'm telling you man but a lot of us I've can't see that far, right? Yeah. A lot of us can't. No, when you're in it, bro, it's the hardest thing in the world. You literally can't see two feet in front of your face. You just see smoke all around you. Man, I, and that, that's what it is. That's why yeah. I say that idea of depression, it really started to form, mm -hmm. right? Because I'll be honest, in the black community, we just don't really address it. We don't the norm is to stuff. You're like, this is this yeah. is life. I wake up and I have to filter myself every day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because of how society sees me. And so when you start getting used to that and conditioned to that, like you're like, oh, well, this is just a day of being black. This, this mm. is... This is not outside the norm. But then once it starts to impede on when you're alone, when you're supposed to be having fun, when you get paid. It was, for me, it was brushing my teeth, getting in the shower, everything that got me closer to that job, just, it, it became more of a burden. 
Mm. And I, I couldn't pick up on it. And then again, you, you probably voice it to somebody and you kind of say it to your aunt and they throw it out like, well, are you depressed? I'm like, Dude, black people don't get depressed. I'm not depressed. They, I'm, would, I'm really, a, they would really say that? No. Say I, in your family? No, 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 no th- you would say that. I would, that was my response. Because again, I'm coming from this tougher the, exterior that, football, the all this. The exactly. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you play football but, and then you did this. So, like, you're not supposed to feel some of this stuff. That's what you're telling yourself. For so sure. I'm not sad. This is yeah, just a bad day. For sure. Then a couple drinks later, you're like, well, maybe I am. So this basically comes to a head, right? You All this stuffing. Mm-hmm. And so talk to us about that day. It was such a different level of freedom, right? Because you're depressed, you're not really going out spending money. So I had money sitting in the bank. Mm-hmm. So my fear wasn't necessarily associated to having a job or not having a job, it was how I was being seen. These labels we put on ourselves, so once we start to... And let's get us in the timeline, Chase, just to be So I'm 24. So you're 24, and this accountant, you said the oil guy was, like, coming in, so that was ending. Your depression was getting worse. You were talking to family members. You didn't think you could talk to family members about it, right? Is it is that correct? All well, this? it's not that you don't think that you can talk to them about it, but you're usually not you're not used to exposing those parts of yourself. Because when people ask you how you're doing, sometimes they don't give a fuck, but sometimes you don't want to just get wrapped up in that conversation. Well, my aunt, the blueprint answer, yeah, I'm doing fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And my aunt, she's just not that person, so she's gonna ask you a question. I just want to get the pieces lined up for the listeners, gotcha. right? So you talk about like the. The, the 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 weed thing you let, let the plug got fucked up <laughs> like that was clear when that was ending now there's another chapter that came later to this ending bro so i just wanted to get some clarity around the pieces that were kind of crashing so, so 21 i got out here at 21 24 was when i got fired right at the accounting job from the accounting right job. and your depression was getting worse to be clear Right then. Uh-huh. Right then. And yeah. then when I got fired, I thought that I was losing it a little bit because I was so happy. I felt so free. And it was fucking me up because I'm not used to getting fired. Like, I might get burned for a touchdown, but then you you forget about it, right? But this burden had been lifted off of me, and I didn't know why. Because, again, I thought the end game was financial stability. Yeah. I thought that was going to be another label that's like, oh, yeah, he got that bread. He got money. Sure. So... I'm running that race. And then again, that's why I love my aunt. Just she's the, the biggest person because somebody has to give you that freedom to dream. That's beautifully said. Somebody has to really. We can't do that all, all on our own. It's like all impossible. Basically. Society's yeah. not set up that way. Yeah. Right. So that when, when it goes back to how your parents yeah. condition you. Because the overall frequency to me of society is not friendly to dreamers. <laughs> it's very like that frequency is a different reason. School's so not. So you better have somebody on your inner circle that's building up that other frequency. That's and really that, what it comes out to. Man, and that you yeah. value their opinion and everything about their life emulates with the advice that they're giving you. Yeah, for sure. If not, if it doesn't reflect it, then you're like, no, mm-hmm. no, that's what I'm saying. Somebody on the inner circle that trusted that you respect mm-hmm. that, you know that, that vibe and invaluable i did that whole thing that you you, you know that i don't I, I don't know if most people do it when they're in a transition where they're like i'm gonna go sit on this rock and smoke this weed and that's very and, movie-esque and, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, was this before the pandemic to be clear to oh you? yeah no this, this is like years before yeah, the pandemic. this is right, right, what okay. 10 two, what, yeah, what year 2011 or something were we or not that was like 2010 okay cool then my my aunt i'm talking to her i'm like this and i was like you know what fuck it I've always wanted to be a superhero, but I didn't believe that it was for me. I'm, I think I'm going to act. And what she said was, oh, I think that's a good idea. And I was like, wait, what? She said, I think it's a good idea, but I think that you are going to have to revise your plan. And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, people have been doing this their whole life. If not, they went to school for it, right? And in my mind, at that time, I wasn't picking up. This is a classically trained actress. Your so, aunt is a classically trained. I got you, got you. So you're talking to somebody, but you don't think about how you're necessarily disrespecting the craft by saying like, hey, I'm just going to do this. Totally. Right? Yeah. So what she said was, and which was the best suggestion, I think in order for you to catch up, you really probably should do comedy. And I was like, well, fuck it. I'll go ask for my job back. That's <laughs> like, I'll go, I'll go ask my job back. That's, you didn't want to do comedy. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Like that is, no. Who wants to go up and just speak in front of people? Like, no. I hear comedy is like the scariest thing that you can do, somebody was saying. I mean, is that true? Blacked You're, out the first time. Like, serious? I don't remember being on stage. Have video of it, but don't remember being there at all. Wow. Thought I went to the bathroom. Did you get laughs? I did. I okay. got a couple laughs 
Um, and that was enough. Was that feeling? That feeling supposed to be like the greatest drug in the world. Do you remember that part? At I least <laughs> now that was the second time because you only have three minutes because you're doing open mics. In a lot of ways, you're like. That's it. And then as soon as you get on stage, you're like, thank God. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. A minute would have been fine. The improv was helping me book commercials. So I got an agent. Mm. I had I was booking okay, commercials. So you had a, a few little checks coming in from yeah. that. Okay. But again, I blew the first check because I was like, this, oh my God, this this is such great money. You get that first check, you're like, I'm gonna go buy a watch. Mm -hmm. Right. And then no more checks come. So you're like, what the fuck was I thinking? Right? <laughs> I think I still have that I watch. You're like Connie, like, when I woke, I spent it on a necklace. Remember? Yes. <laughs> you can't tell me nothing anyway. And and I spent it on a watch, right? I was like, oh my god, this is this is gonna be so great. I'm gonna buy so many watches. This oh is my nice. God, man. Well, I'll tell you what, because I made money in entertainment, and when those checks come, it's like you think those checks are just gonna it's gonna stay right there, and actually it's only gonna go up, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's just not how it works. Mostly it's this, you know what I'm saying? And that's why yeah, I, I love yeah. my aunt is because at the end of the day, what she was giving me were all the tools. So acting, like you said, is like mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Comedy can be like this. But if acting is going like this and comedy is going like this, then now you can cross over with this and you can intertwine. They balance each other. Yeah, exactly. yeah, for sure. As well as you're still getting caught up. You have comedic beats. You have comedic mm -hmm. tone. You have all these things that are also going to be tools for this. Acting yeah. may help a little bit with comedy, but comedy is definitely going to help with acting. So this might be a good time because I always love like breaking down people's journeys. There's this one pivotal moment, right? Like I wasn't going to go to that party that day and then I went to the party and I met so-and-so, you know, like I love these moments. Again, I'm, I'm a God guy, so I think there's oh, a man. lot of intervening, man. So, man. so is can we can we go to a moment like that? Are we kind of coming up on that, a moment and that, like and that? And that's what I was about to get to. Okay, so yeah. my, my, my big epiphany and, and I found myself thankful, very thankful for, um, was when I got out here, my management company... Uh, who you were working for. Who I was working for was Sinbad's brother. Mm, okay, right? okay. So my aunt also used to work for Sinbad. Got you. Now that's family because yep. they've known each other for yep. so long. So yep. now I'm getting ingratiated into that because, again, I'm here, I'm her nephew, so she wants me to get with like-minded people outside the people that I already knew coming for out sure. here. For sure. So fast forward... Me and Sinbad's daughter are good friends. I'm back at work mm -hmm. now because I, I I need to. So I went to Entertainment Partners where the payroll company for entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I'm watching the checks. As I'm going to audition, I'm like, oh, shit, you didn't get that. <laughs> oh, shit, you didn't get that. <laughs> Sinbad must have had a conversation with her. And he's like, well, why didn't Chase on, you know, doing this? First, he didn't know that I did comedy. Your aunt never told him during this whole time when you were trying out comedy. Because at the end of the day, that's not necessarily going to get you anywhere quicker. If you're not ready for it, then you're going to go fuck yourself. That's very true, man. For me, it was it was a different place to be because I'm trying to still manage this. So I'm like still going to classes. I'm sleeping in my car. I bring an extra change of clothes because I'm getting out of comedy club so late. When Sinbad called, it, it threw me off. I'm, to be perfectly honest, when he called, I didn't think it was him. One of my friends had just won a prank show. <laughs> so I thought he was pranking me at work. <laughs> Bro, that's amazing. So I hung up. I was like, yeah, I, I can't do this shit right now. I'm busy at work. And I hung up. And hung up he, on Sinbad. Uh -huh, and he calls back. He was like, nah, man, like, this Sinbad, don't hang up on me again. And I was like, okay, Mr. Sinbad, it's her. Um, and then he asked me to do a show. Yeah. And, and then, you had already been in the mix a little bit with Sinbad, though, because of your aunt. At least you met him a couple times, right? No, I, I mean, or I'm you, I'm, one of, I'm one of his daughter's best friends. That's so true. I have been seeing him. But again, you're not associating it to it. That's your daughter's friend. So Right, right, right. And right, you right. knew that I did accounting. As much as you knew I did comedy, you don't necessarily know somebody does comedy until you really see them. That makes sense. So, and, yeah. And so he happened to... So the two never got connected prior to this. I understand that. Yeah, I'm just yeah, his yeah. daughter's friend. Right, right. If anything. And I'm my aunt's nephew. I'm with you. So I'm, with you. I'm family in some senses. And then when he called me to do that, we did a show at... Uh, College of the Canyons or something like that out there by Six Flags. Oh, is it, I heard you in an interview. Is this where he like tossed you the keys and said, "Hey, I park my car because you no. look like a valet"? Yes, no, 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 no. So this was before that, right? Okay, right. So there was a gap in time where he yeah. called me to do that show, and then I thought that I fucked up. I was like, oh, my God, I must have been trash. Like, I got laughs and stuff. I thought it was a good show. And then he was like, hey, I want you to go do a road gig. Mm. So that was the what started to unravel now being at a full-time job. Yeah. Because now you're leaving on a Thursday or a Friday and you're about to max out your PTO because you've already been going to auditions. So you had to let go of the job. No, they let oh. go of me. And I remember I had before I moved to Santa Monica, 
I had a, uh, I was staying in a loft downtown. I had my first check sitting on my front seat. It started raining. I was breaking down because I was like, what the fuck is happening in your life? This is terrible, yada, yada. And I went upstairs. I lived around the corner from LA Cafe. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, let's just ground ourselves. We're going to go upstairs. We're going to watch a, a good TV show. I think it was Nashville at the time. Yeah. Telling on myself and shit. <laughs> uh, we're going to smoke. And then we're going to just relax. Yeah. Right? God got you. He would not He would not put you in this situation if he didn't have you. And I need you to believe this. Mm -hmm. Literally, and I'm having this conversation with myself. Because I'm like, yo, like, I don't understand this. Like, you're finally, look like you're getting to a good place. It's like that saying. Like, he, he, he's not going to bring you this far just to leave you, basically. Like, it was that moment. And... I got upstairs, I'm in the middle of smoking, mm -hmm. and my agent calls like, hey, we have a check over here for you. So I'm like- Unexpected check? Unexpected check. Okay, I love that. So I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, cool, I'll come pick it up, da 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 The next day, Sinbad calls like, hey man, so uh, I kinda wanna do some more road gigs, man, coming up in like the next month or so. Are you available? Man, I'm I'm so fucking available right now. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm so I'm so available right now. This is crazy. Man, I wish that happened to me on the next girl I hit up for a date. I'm so available man, right I'm now. So, Let's I'm, go. Man, I'm so I'm so like if you have no idea. I'm dressed already. Um okay. and so then we go do that road gig, right? And I'm overanalyzing. I'm like, I'm doing a road gig, da, da, this. And that's when he was tossing me the keys. He was like, man, I can't I can't that's get this out of my head. Bro. He was like, you dress like a fucking valet. Because I'm I'm catering to this older crowd. So I don't want to necessarily <laughs> think about it. And it's like this. No, you overthought it. Like if you go be funny, yeah. none of this shit will Can't matter. you dress however you want to dress as a comedian, yes. bro? Yeah, yes, but it's yeah. Sinbad. So you're overthinking everything. I get that. Yeah, I get that. Because you're like, all right, cool. His audience is Oh, you're sure. about the age range there, right, 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 The age yeah, range. Yeah, right, right, right. I'm thinking about that. the context of that. the the jokes that you know that yeah. I if need to. If you were to frame. Go over, open it for Eric Andre, it'd be a, a whole different vibe. Don't wear that. clothes. <laughs> yeah, don't wear clothes. The most entertaining part would be you putting your clothes back on. You know what I'm saying? Because Andre's going might start the show naked. You don't know. And now y'all up there naked together, so you don't you don't know what the vibe's gonna be. You're like, all right, cool. And I remember I, I bought these vests, and I was like, I'm gonna kill them with these fucking vests. <laughs> He's like, no, you're going to park the best fucking cars in that vest because they're going to trust you with that safe-ass outfit that you had on. And then I think I had, like, these prop glasses because I was like, oh, I'm going to look older. And like, and then so he just starts shitting on me. I think the thing that we buy into isn't necessarily what he had experience of. Mm -hmm. So he's like, no, nah, let's strip away all this bullshit that you done bought into. Like, mm. all this stuff does not make you funny. Mm. And then yeah, he different, different era, bro, raised him. It's like that in music, too, man, because I worked in the music industry. Mm -hmm. It's like... Now it's so much about everything around the music, not so much about the music. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and then I think that it ends up funneling into the music because now you were is is bullshit around mm -hmm. the music, and now that's what the music is about. Yes, 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 absolutely spills into the music. Yeah, completely. And now you were like this. Well. Why don't we have R and B singers anymore? Because it's spilt the shit around yeah. it, spilt into it. So now they ain't talking about making love; they talking about fucking. Yeah. And now you're like, oh, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> that sounds so passionate. I feel, like, well, I feel like you're weaving material in this interview, bro. Nah, I, I, wish. Yeah, I yeah, wish. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So, so where were you at, headwise, life wise, career wise, just prior to the pandemic? You know? Prior to the pandemic, I had. Now been on a road with, with Sinbad for four, three or four years. Mm -hmm. And I had now just started doing my own headlining. Oh, shit. Right before the pandemic. So I do my first one. I get sick. Like, I, you got it at the time, yeah? You got COVID? Yeah, I got it yeah, right yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. So as right, soon right. as I got better was yeah. when they said, hey, we're about to shut everything down. I was yeah, like, yeah. I just got better. And then, again, there were more tour dates. Because then I had just came off of also filming my first season of Bigger. Mm -hmm. And so I was on this high, like, oh, man, see, this is how it's supposed to go. Like, you're not going to get the money parts yet, and that ain't even really what you're worried about because you had the acting. So now you can really get the comedy on headlining. And one of the the club owners told me, he was like— Wait, we just breezed over something kind yeah. of important there. Go ahead. Because you got the show on BET, mm -hmm. right? But that, That's a big career break. Oh, yeah. that was... right, so I feel like we just glazed over that just real quick. Oh, yeah. Fuck. When you got that phone call. That was magic because I was touring with Sinbad. Yeah. And we were up in the Bay. Uh-huh. And then I fly back earlier than he does because I have my callbacks. What they did was they sandwiched the callbacks, mm -hmm. the tests, mm -hmm. and uh, the network Damn. all in one day. Wow. So I landed at 6-something in the morning, ran through all this. I had been there all day. And then they were like, hey, we need you to come back tomorrow. 
mm-hmm. right? Because I do comedy, yeah. they don't think you could do drama. But it makes sense because some does. some comedians aren't willing to go there and be transparent or project that much of their life because you are playing a character, but you're pulling some from Some comedians could do that well, though, but... Most of us actually can. Okay. We just don't get the chance. There you because go. Because they're like, nah, you're there supposed you to be funny. And it's like this. Did you not hear the dark shit I just talked about? That's that's real. For me, I was too tired to really pick up what was going on. I take a nap, wake up at 2 a.m., go through all my sides. Mm-hmm. 6 a.m., I'm on with my acting coach, going through it, yada, yada. Man, I love your, I love your hustle. Uh, like, I, I just got to stop and appreciate it. Uh, See, I feel like, again, the athletics, that level of dedication and commitment, bro, it's transferable skills. And that's you know? what a lot of people yeah. don't. I think pick up, but an agent told me he was like, "That's that." I love working with former athletes. He was like, "Cause yep. you guys are programmed and wired a little differently, and the, the defeat don't necessarily take you all the way out." Absolutely, the resiliency you get, and then stamina you get. You mm-hmm. you understand dedication and stamina, and it's funny. I had a a rapper who was signed to Def Jam who got a crazy following on YouTube, and he was like, "He's like all this shit is is stamina." Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, when he hit me with that, I'm like, Nipsey, Nipsey said it. It's a marathon. Is that what he said? Yeah, marathon. Yeah, stamina. That's it. I'm just not gonna give up. I'm on fail. I'm on feel the failure. I'm gonna be days where I want to quit, but you know. But I'm, then you get that, that. It's it's so sweet when you feel like you're, man. You're just like clawing, and then you get that phone call. You get mm-hmm. that break, man. I love I love that shit so much, man. Because it's like that payoff for that level of dedication is what I love to see. People look forward to tearing people down. That's where the cancel culture. But that's where all I, this stuff. I feel like first thing I thought of when you said that people look forward to. I feel like they're just unhappy in their own lives. Projecting. And they're looking to channel that on somebody. Projecting. Yeah. It's easier for me to deal with your shit than it is for me to deal with mine. Exactly. And I, I have exactly. way more insight. And, and you'll be like this, oh my God, he's Yeah, so let me smart. play armchair quarterback on your life and not look at my life. We've become so accustomed to it because it's now it's at our fingertips. People say don't get too attached to the praise. Mm-hmm. Am I right? Because mm-hmm. like then... If, if any criticism comes, you're not going to be too attached to that either. But it's hard. The not ideal. To be, yeah, it's hard you know? not to be human. That's it. Right? I know. Somebody hit your car, you're going to get out and you're going to say something. I know, I know. I had a Comic-Con and they were like, people say like they act tough. Oh, the comments don't affect me. But comment can't affect you. He's like, because like once you see it, you can't unsee it or something is what he said, which is interesting. And I got a little glimpse into how I was going to be affected by that. The first time you hand out flyers and you see somebody just not give a fuck and throw your flyer on the ground. That bro. You, and they just took it out you. your hand. That oh, happened. my God. Oh, my <laughs> God. Because you have this whole, you know, mindset. Because, again, I think that is you build these models off of things that you've seen. So mm-hmm. when you start thinking about the music industry, like we know about mixtapes. We know about selling it out the trunk. We know it from Ice-T to Ludacris. Yeah, Master to P did that shit too. Master P to, to do, Nipsey yeah. to all of them. Like, yeah. it's like, oh, okay, cool. But when you see somebody that and it has your face on it, and they're like, yeah, 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 nah. And they, they throw it. Or they nudge it to where they don't even want to take it. or don't. You, you start to really feel defeated in that space. And then you're like this. Listen, I'm going to hand out 100 flyers. I really only need 20-something people to come. Mm. So it's a numbers game. So as much as I give a fuck, I don't. Because I really only want the 25 that want to be there. You yeah. do feel some type of way because you feel like, so I wasted my money on 100 flyers. <laughs> and they're just going to throw it on the ground. Now you can't even pick it up because they stepped on it afterwards. Like, fuck his face. <laughs> That's awesome. But everything is perspective in life, too. You know, now when you're going on Venice Beach or wherever you're at and you're going by somebody handing stuff out, I'm sure you're, you're not going to be a jerk to those people because you understand. So there's something about just this understanding going back to like calling the whole class difference, like, you know, rich, poor. It's mm-hmm. like, man, if a, if a rich person becomes poor and they get some understanding of what that's just like, whole different interaction there. You perspective. Know? Yeah. Perspective, perspective is everything. Said, yeah. Like, yeah. I, that, that's the you thing know? that I think continuously humanizes me. Well, that's the thing. I feel like that's where challenge in life becomes a blessing Mm -hmm. because it puts you in touch with your humanity. And I think when we're in touch with our humanity, it's easier to live a life with more grace. And you think about like, people have a lot of problems with romantic relationships, right? Like divorce a thing, relationships being all fucked up is a thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, can you bring some of this perspective to a romantic relationship? Mm -hmm. It's harder. Mm -hmm. I think you're more clouded in emotion around it and stuff, but it's like, oh, maybe, you know, you have a partner who, let's just say, had a parent that was abusive to them. So they're going to have certain triggers now when y'all are together. But if you had that level of perspective i wonder if you could bring some compassion and some grace i've tried it i think that again going back to a microwave society and then sometimes reflecting on who you were 
when you were younger. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So we'll get women our age and wonder why they're hardened in some some ways, right? And instead of taking necessarily responsibility of saying, like, well, let me find out. Before I judge this, you'll be like, well, it wasn't my fault. Mm-hmm. Like, that wasn't my fault. So why are you taking that out on me? Mm-hmm. But it kind of was. Hmm. Because you, the, a younger version of you moved just the same way as the dude that did this to her. Yeah. So sure. you're not necessarily thinking about those things. And like you said, that emotional barrier. But I think that also, too. Emotions cloud, bro, first oh my God. of all, right? Yeah. yeah right yeah, away. Yeah. But I think that we're dealing with something different in the mm-hmm. sense of we're dealing with old ideologies on manhood of mm-hmm. how we were brought up, how we were programmed, and a new age woman. That's all shifting right now. Do you understand that? The whole landscape for guys and women, men and women, are shifting. So nobody like, knows Now men, I feel like there is more... We can open up. We can talk about shit. I said, I think post pandemic, especially oh my God. mental health is kind of right. Okay. Of course. Like, cause above being a man or a woman, we're human first. Bingo. <laughs> Feel me? Again, some of our societal norms have really impeded on our ideas of mental health, but we're getting better. Maybe starting now. I think, in, in, in but pandemic. I think that our generation is getting better. Yeah. Gen Z is definitely there with, but Gen, millennials. but Gen Z, the one thing that I've seen and sometimes is the difference is, is moved to a hypersensitive place, right? Yeah. Which, which wasn't necessarily a bad thing, but it, it's almost going from one extreme to the other. And then, like you said, the best place is probably in the middle. It is. It is. Right? Because then that still gives you grace to be a human being. <laughs> right, yeah. Bro. Or to to mess up, to restructure, to not have a good day, to Bro, have all these things. See, that's the thing, real shit. Growth, one of my therapists said, growth is not linear. It's not a straight line. So no shade on Gen Z because I think their heart is in the right place, mm-hmm. but the execution might need a little work because growth is not linear. It's choppy. It's a choppy line that hopefully moves up. And Gen Z sees the choppiness of the line often as like, yo, you're fucking up, fuck you. Like, what are you doing? Like, I hate you. That's part of that's part of the deal. How, yeah, how mean, dare you do this to how me? How dare you do this? And it's, it's like, real. no, listen, we've paved the way. We were the ones still getting ass whoopings and all that <laughs> stuff. Like, we were the first ones with the hotline. We were, like, <laughs> the bridge to talking about mental health. We were that bridge. Like, our parents were going through different, different stuff in society. And we're still that bridge. But some of us don't want to be that bridge. Because, again, we've experienced different things. Like, if you just think about the telephone or cell phones, what mm-hmm. we saw, we, we grew up in the cell phone was a big block thing. Yeah, and then, yeah the Zach Morris, right? Was, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it went to the little Nokias <laughs> with Snake on it. And then, yeah. you know, you start to go to where now it's handheld, but it's a computer. It's all yeah. these other things in it. Sometimes that evolution is expedited to a place where it almost pushes back, right? So we've when yeah. you start thinking about all the things that we've seen since we've been on Earth, then you match that with our parents. We, now we can see why our parents feel the way that, that they feel. Great right? perspective, Chase. Yeah. For yeah. the younger generation, you haven't seen what we've seen right now. It gives us more insight to what our parents, you haven't seen what we've seen to know why we feel this way. You just know that you feel this way and you don't know why. So when you have more perspective, it is it is a bit easier, right? But they don't want our perspective. Yeah. No, I'm saying, but, but for us... Mm-hmm. We got, we can contrast shit. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because again, I think that we still have some of those old ideologies because we know we were aware. Yeah. We we're programmed different. Homework looked different. Yeah. TV looked different. Our grandparents moved differently. So the way that we were programmed is totally different as far as how we retrieve information. We were encyclopedias. We were almanacs. We were all these things that made you go and do the work, right? Mm-hmm they're accustomed to just getting it. Mm. This needs to be the way. And it's like, yeah, but at the end of the day, right. My, yeah, my, yeah, yeah. They're trying to they're trying to do like life change like it's Amazon Prime or something like exactly. that. Exactly. So I it's a microwave you. society. I get you. Right. And then we're coming on the things that we've learned. That's why sometimes when they, they say critical race theory, it's like, no, that you're talking about history? <laughs> Yeah, that's all it is. It's, it's like, history, no, right? let, yeah, let's talk about history. So yeah. at the end of the day, I can't wonder why my grandparents yeah. or parents, they were integration. That's real. They were assimilation in some ways. Yeah. You know, so when you start looking at what we went through, we were the other side of integration. Hmm. We were our parents telling us like, hey, it was it was fucked up the first time that they tried to do it. But we're trying to present something better because now opportunities look different, jobs look different, everything. So we we at least had that information. They don't have that information to know why they're even upset. Now they keep removing stuff 
from history. So now, now you're impeding on each other's lives because now you don't even know why I feel this way because they've taken us out of history. You don't even know why you're looked at that way because they've taken us out of history. Because we what? Don't want to be bad people. So now we start minimizing it or we go to the the microcosm of it and it's like, oh, okay, cool, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, that's a bad song because it's talking about bullying. Hmm? I heard that one, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Rudolph, they, they was like, well, that's a that's a song about bullying, and we don't want kids to be bullied, and we don't want this. It's like... How's that a song about bullying? Sorry. Because remember how they were they would talk bad to Rudolph before he had to come oh, and save right, the day right, right, and all right. this okay. whole thing. And I'm okay. like, wow. it's, it's a story about perseverance. It's a story about pushing through. It's a story about grit. It's mm-hmm. not necessarily this story that you've wrapped in bullying because you didn't want to see all the other parts or the benefits of what life is. That's life. Yeah. Life is a bullying. Life is a bully. Like mm-hmm. you said, you wanted to go linear. You thought that it yeah, was just, just going to stay yeah. parallel yeah, and it was yeah. just going to keep going on the same trajectory. It's like, no, that's false. That's a false narrative. And you bought into it. So now that you bought into it and now we're in this place where either we're overworked or our parents ain't necessarily bought into mental health. So that's your grandparents. We're overworked. Yeah. Because we're trying to hustle, get to this place. Y'all not necessarily getting that information. Y'all just feel. And trauma is also handed down. So now everybody's dealing with oh, this Oh, yeah, trauma. it's generational. Yeah. So now we can't wonder why we're in this place where it's like, well, they want this, they want this, they want this, they want this. And it's like, so have any of y'all met in the middle? And right now, we're the middle. That's the one silver lining, bro. We're the middle. We're the middle. We're the gray area. That's where you want to be. That's the sweet spot, bro. Some of us aren't good with Some being in the gray area. Some of us aren't doing good. But again, I think you and I agree that, you know, CNN, Fox, that's fucked up. Somewhere in the middle, bro. Sports Center. Sports Center, yeah. Chase Anthony, this has been a lot of fun, man. I'm grateful that you were able to bless us today. I think we talked about a lot of great shit today. This was dope. Thank you. This was thank you, man. Way doper than I thought, and it felt very therapeutic. That's how we do it, man. Imagine that. Just bringing the real makes you feel better. So where can people find you? Uh, At Chase Comedy on all social media platforms. ChaseComedy.com. There it is. Hopefully at your local comedy club coming soon comedy store or n- every once in a while i'm i so the first place is usually where i frequent the most is the west side comedy theater but that was the stage that i said i blacked out <laughs> oh, that's a legendary <laughs> stage though in your defense right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all, right. all right well thank you again and uh thank you everybody for tuning in and we'll see you next episode